folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. It's been a while since I've done my last movie review, which was Arrival. And it took me a few weeks. I had been busy a lot lately, so it took me some time. So I decided to review a film that came out a little over 20 years ago. On December 14, 1996. It became the highly successful film to date. And it was nominated for five Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Actor, and Best Supporting Actor. And yes, it was the most popular film of all time. It's the romantic comedy drama, Jerry Maguire. And it just came out um, just recently on Blu-ray, celebrating its 20th anniversary. This is the 20th anniversary edition. That's a Best Buy exclusive, so as you can tell from the sticker label, it says only a Best Buy. But it will soon not be a Best Buy exclusive anymore, later on. It's also a limited edition, so it includes the original motion picture soundtrack. And it has rare, never before seen, deleted scenes, and extended ones as well. And it has new features included which has the the picture in picture commentary with Tom Cruise, Cuba Gooding Jr., Renee Zellweger and uh, Cameron Crowe yeah. as you can see right here yeah <laughs> looks really cool now Jerry Maguire was indeed um, the most talked about film of all time has all the memorable quotes such as you complete me you have me at hello help me help you and of course show me the money <laughs> but my favorite one of all was the quote that Tom Cruise as Jerry Maguire who just got fired from his agency saying I know what you want to do what you want me to do was just just flip out! I remember that moment. Which is also the most memorable moment of all was when he decided to take his go fish and decided to have someone come with him. And it turns out to be, of course, Dorothy Boyle, who was played by Renee Zellweger. And they decided to work together as a team, try to help out uh, a football player named Rod Tidwell. He was having some issues of his own. He's a family man, by the way. You know, with his wife, uh, played by Regina Kane, And has a son. So, apparently, he was having some issues here. Everything was going great for Jerry Maguire during his days as a sports agent. And things didn't seem to go well as it turned out until it gets better and better again because now he has a relationship with his clients they both got married she's of course a single mother has a kid on her own and a very cute kid by the way yeah, Jonathan Lipnicki she has an older sister who's played by Bonnie Hunt who didn't like him at first well, anyway, um, definitely a great addition to pick up, um, as you can see. See the slipcover is embossed as we know it. Here it is. It also includes, um, yeah, it does have the digital copy, but I'm not going to show you. But it has the mission statement that he wrote. Yeah, which is, the things we think and do not say, the future of our business. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a book that has all the information from the movie, with pictures included. Yeah, even a, uh, an info from writer and director Cameron Crowe, you know, Gave us films like Say Anything. And 
Yeah, it just shows you all, all of this. I'm just going to show you a little bit of it. See what it looks like. Just <laughs> here it is. It's <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can find the course. Yeah. SMI Sports Management International, Jerry McGuire, seen. Senior Vice President, and yeah, so on. And here's what it looks like. You can see the the Blu-ray right here, which has the original poster art of Tom Cruise, and the original motion picture soundtrack. Yeah, a lot of songs on here. This isn't the first time I ever had a soundtrack um, on the Blu-ray and DVD. In fact, I had uh, movies like Rudy, the special edition, that came with a soundtrack, and also the movie um, Beetlejuice. But it's not a full soundtrack, it's just a few songs from the film. So that's really cool. But anyway, you got a wonderful cast right there. You got Tom Cruise, um, who just got nominated for Best Actor. He didn't win, but he did actually won a Golden Globe, from what I heard. That was cool. You got Cuba Gooding Jr., who just won his first uh, Best Supporting Actor at Camby Award. And he definitely deserved it, because he was so good. And you got Renee Zellweger in her breakout role because she only did a few films, uh, independent movies. Mostly she was doing the film Empire Records. And you got uh, Jay Moore, who was uh, a comedian from Saturday Night Live, but he went on to do bigger things. Yeah, because I know he went on to do films like Mafia and Small Soldiers. You got Regina King from the TV series 227, and she was also in the film Poetic Justice. Um, Jonathan Lipnicki, and that was his first film before he went on to do films like Stuart Little and The Little Vampire, as well as Like Mike. And Bonnie Hunt's been in other films such as Beethoven. And writer and director Cameron Crowe gave a say anything, as I just mentioned. So, wow. <laughs> Plus, you got a lot of sports cameos of of several athletes who were very popular at the time, you know, like Troy Aikman and all the rest, uh, as I could think about. Um, also, you got Kelly Preston in the film. Uh, forgot to mention uh, John Travolta's wife. In the movie, so yeah, it's a very sweet uh, and highly successful uh, romantic comedy drama that sadly I really miss nowadays. Because I, I thought uh, Tom Cruise and, and Renee Zellweger had terrific chemistry together, as far as we know. And it works. Well, anyway, let's get to the review. Stars once again Tom Cruise, Cuba Gooding Jr., Renee Zellweger, Kelly Preston, Jonathan Lipnicki, Jay Moore, Regina King, Bonnie Hunt, also Jerry O'Connor with Bro Bridges in an uncredited role. And it's written and directed by Cameron Crowe, who did say anything. The movie begins where we meet a glossy sports agent who's 35 years old named Jerry Maguire, who's played by Tom Cruise, who works at the sports management 
International in Laguna Beach, California. Basically uh, having a life of its own, but things just seem to hit an all-time low for him. He writes his own mission statements, as we know in the movie, where the things we think and do not say, the future of our business, I just show you the, the booklet, which basically talks about his perceived honesty in the sports management business that he's been working on. But he has his desire of working with several sports clients that he has, and he's trying to provide a better quality for himself. But unfortunately, SMI had sent in another sports agent named Bob Sugar, who's played by Jay Moore, who happens to be his protege that sadly fired him while he was inside a crowded restaurant. So they decided to go battle with each other by actually calling his clients. So Bob was calling all the other sports um, clients out there and all the rest. So it was like a battle and battle between each other. That is until Jerry had finally uh, had in touch with a football player named Rod Tidwell, who's played by Cuba Gooding Jr. And this is where we get that famous scene where <laughs> he goes around screaming his head off while calling uh, <laughs> Rod and, and telling them to show me the money and so on <laughs> which um, of course Rod Tidwell is a football player from for the Arizona Cardinals he was already feeling disgruntled by his contract so he thought maybe they would help out and see what they can do so after that he, he pack up getting ready to leave he took his goldfish with him <laughs> and decided to ask someone to actually join him. Yep, and it turns out to be Dorothy Boyle, who is played by Renee Zellweger, who happens to be a single mother, 26 years old, who actually has a kid of her own named Ray, who is played by Jonathan Lipnicki. So meanwhile, a football player named Frank Cush Cushman, who's played by Jerry O'Connor, who's a superstar quarterback, um, who expects to be number one pick in the NFL draft, which unfortunately, it didn't seem to work out for Jerry because by the time um, they went inside the NFL draft and he was with uh, Rod Tidwell, for a while, but he had to go for him just to see how how it's going to happen so that way he'll be able to play football. His father, played by Bo Bridges, had accidentally signed up by another sports agent, as we, as we know, Bob Sugar. So things didn't seem to work out very well and, and on top of that he just dumped his girlfriend who actually works uh, with her named Avery who's played by Kelly Preston and yes she actually beats the shit out of him after she was uh, taking out all the NFL folders and just stacking them all together um, onto the table so yeah they they had a fight got dumped and decided to take a taxi and of course, Avery was um, his fiance too, so it just didn't seem to work out. So he wants up turning to Dorothy instead. He became very closer to her son Ray. Yeah, because they they seemed to go out with each other too. It, they hanged out more. Uh, I I remember that moment where <laughs> they they were actually competing each other by making a conversation and uh, I remember that moment when he says while they're driving along in the car saying did you know that uh, my neighbor has free rabbits yeah that's what Ray said <laughs> well 
Jerry was just making conversation about the information that he said. Well, he was just well, he hangs out with with all the sports uh, clients that he has. Anyway, so they both started a relationship together. Things seemed to work out just fine. While Dorothy's older sister, Laurel, who's played by Bonnie Hunt, didn't seem to get along with uh, Jerry for a while, but until she, she got used to it. I mean, she's basically having mixed feelings about him. Um, but anyway, he came right over at night. Um, well, Dorothy had to give him something to actually cover that uh, bruise that he had on his eye since he got beat up by Avery. And they were having a drink. Uh, Wade just woke up for a little while, you know, just you know, talking to um, Jerry about what's going on and, and all that. And so he went back to bed and then he was just making a conversation with, with Dorothy and while well, they were having beer where he was doing the <laughs> he just brought in a fire poker and just going around the saying we meet again when he pointed out to um, the fishbowl that has the gold fish and that was the gold fish that he took from his office so as the film seems to go on Jerry decided to um, help out Rod Tidwell become, as we know it, uh, as famous as he could because unfortunately he couldn't do a Reebok commercial so since it didn't seem to work out. So he decided to work um, by doing a mattress store commercial such as riding on the camel and all of that and I know that was too much for him. So during the Monday Night Football there was yeah, Rod Tidwell was ready for the game between the Cardinals and the Dallas Cowboys. So Rod actually played very well, but unfortunately he receives a serious injury while trying to catch the, the touchdown. But suddenly he was unconscious until he finally recovers and dances completely well right in front of the entire crowd and Everything just seems to go very well, so he was okay, and he was just happy that turns out they had a great game, spite of the injury, and he finally had everything that was coming for him. So of course Jerry and, and Rod had embrace in front of all the athletes, and everything just turns out so well that after that, um, Jerry, um, who just got married with Dorothy, before all this had happened. Decided to go back um, to his wife, yeah, Dorothy, of course. Just explain to him about what just happened, and now this is where he's he had that moment right in front of um, Laurel's friends. You know, they were already having conversations at her house, and this is where he says the line, "You." complete me and then she just says you have me at hello yeah so yeah they made up and then we went back to Rod who just just had an interview explained to him about how he finally got his dream you know that Jerry had helped him a lot loves his family and talks about what happened during the playoffs um, at Monday Night Football and things just seem to get better and better for him so he's happy that he got his success and there you go. In the sports show, yeah it was called the uh, Roy Firestones sports show and of course Jerry has speak um, by several other pro athletes um, who actually had read his mission statement. Yeah, because early in the film, they actually sent all the mission statements that he sold. So he sold like a million copies of them. So everything just worked so well. And 
and they were delighted. Then after that, uh, the movie ends, which we had, uh, and a great moment right there at the end where Ray actually threw a baseball all the way up high. I mean, he's a little kid, but I never thought he would throw it all the way this high. <laughs> it just works. And by the way, that, that scene that they, they shot uh, at the baseball field was, believe it or not, was basically the same location where they filmed uh, Hook and the TV show um, Salute Your Shorts at uh, Griffin Park. Yeah. There was also a deleted scene where they actually went to the L.A. Zoo, where uh, you saw Ray, yeah, it, you can find this on the Blu-ray, that so I know I had to give that part away, but that's okay. Where they have Ray actually um, seeing all all the animals, including the giraffe, while um, Jerry Maguire and Dorothy Boro was just you know, kissing and having a good time. So it, it was perfect. Loved that. I wish they kept that scene at the end, but I know it's because of time. Oh wow, I mean, it was a very fun movie, um, definitely the best uh, romantic comedy drama that he had to offer, and it isn't just a sports movie as we know it, it's, I mean, there wasn't much um, football coverage that the film was going for, but at least we get to see all the moments that went through it, and it works. Um, no doubt about it, great cast right there. I mean, Tom Cruise did an awesome job playing Jerry Maguire. He was definitely born to play that role because, after all, he did so say anything and he thought this would be a good idea because he read the script uh, with writer and director Cameron Crowe. So, there you go. I mean, Tom Cruise really had that, that grin on his face. Uh, loved that. Especially when he was with uh, Renee Zellweger, yeah, of course, Jerry Maguire, Dorothy Boyle together on, on screen. It just feels like, man, they had a perfect relationship together. Great chemistry right there. It totally works. And they really bought it, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, also, Cruz himself actually loved that scene. Um, where they were both uh, together at night, just going out to go eat at a Mexican restaurant, uh, making conversations and all that, talking about business, how they're going to work out um, to fix uh, Rod Tidwell's uh, contract and all of that. It was perfect. Right there. I kind of wish Cruz had won the Oscar for that role. I mean, it, he definitely stole it completely. But it's good that he won a Golden Globe. Which, surprisingly enough, was actually written for Robin Williams, originally. So Robin Williams was going to get the role. Um, they weren't going to get Cuba Gooding Jr. They were before later on. It was going to be uh, Damon Wayans from In Living Color. And they were going to get Mira Savino instead of Renee Zellweger. So, yep, things have changed after that. <laughs> so they, they fixed that problem, and now it's just, as we know it, Tom Cruise, Cuba Gooding Jr., and, and Renee Zellweger. And speaking of Cuba Gooding Jr., I definitely never forget that moment when he finally won his Best Supporting Actor at the Academy Awards. And... I remember he was like, <laughs> he was jumping up like crazy, just like his character in the movie. Yeah, I mean, because remember that moment at the end where he got unconscious uh, after that touchdown, and he just dancing really wildly, you know, just going around, uh, you know, flipping and all that. But he, he was really going crazy right there at the Oscars. And then he says, I love you people! Right in front of the crowd while he got the Oscar. It, it was just, oh man, a, a fine, memorable moment uh, in the Oscar history, 
right there. And yes, I'm glad he got the award. He really deserved it. Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. was such a great actor. I loved him in other films that he did, like like Boys in the Hood, even the the, the movie, um, which is very underrated too, with Emilio Estevez and Dennis Leary, as well as Stephen Dorff and Jeremy Piven. Yeah, Judgment Night. Yeah, Judgment Night was a good one. And he did other good stuff. And of course, uh, Rat Race. Loved that comedy. He also did As Good As It Gets um, a year later. So there you go. But then he did some bad films um, that followed later on in his career and it just didn't work out. But he's still doing great. And Renee Zellweger, definitely a breakout role for her and definitely sparked chemistry between her and Tom Cruise. It, it just works like a charm just right there um, and, and plus she was very cute too I mean she was beautiful very smart and it shows um, she, she was so good in other films so she was just a, a new actress she did the movie um, Empire Records which which is a very underrated uh, comedy you know set inside uh, a record store, a music store that is. So she was very, uh, she was definitely the right choice to play Dorothy. It, it makes sense. Jonathan Lipnicki as Ray, um, just a very cute kid, and you know, with glasses and love all the the attention with uh, him and Jerry. It just works. I mean, he really loves them so much. It's it's like man, it's terrific right there. Great moments. I love that. Then you got Jay Moore playing a complete jerk as um, his protege uh, Bob Sugar. I mean the fact that he was the one firing him and he wants to make it big too the way that Jerry was um, since uh, SMI just. Had him uh, take over, and yeah, and that's what happened. Just didn't seem to work out. Uh, then you got uh, Avery, played by Kelly Preston, who, in the movie, you know, they just made love with each other. It was Jerry's fiance, and probably the most memorable moment together was when they actually had sex. Yeah, they were all naked, and they actually ate strawberries uh, in that moment. Yeah, while well, they were sitting together. Wow. <laughs> uh, Jerry O'Connor, um, great actor. Yeah, he just uh, came from doing the TV series Sliders. Um, I always remember him from the movie Stand By Me, where he played a kid saying... Does anybody else want to look at a dead body? <laughs> yeah, but he was good in this movie. Um, and what a cast. They, they were all good. It, it's definitely uh, the best movie of 1996. Uh, it's right up there with uh, films like Fargo, uh, Bound, uh, Independence Day and all, all the uh, Mission Impossible, of course, and all the rest of the films that came out that year. I mean, 96 was definitely a great year for movies, without a doubt. And this shows. Um, out of its 50 million budget that this movie made, and boy, it was a huge success. 273.6 million dollars that it made at the box office. Had a highly successful uh, BHS selling tapes as we know it later on. Uh, had the first DVD release um, a few weeks after its release in the middle of Memorial Day weekend, which it just causes a firestorm right there. It was it's one of the biggest romantic comedy dramas of all time and sadly I, I really missed that and 
it's also kind of sad too because having to look at this movie again after all these years and by the way the transfer looks amazing too it had a 4k remaster it looks as good as as ever the film just seems rather dated now because you notice uh, how different um, everything looked in the film I mean the TVs that they had the, the Sony TVs, Trinitrons everywhere um, their cell phones that they had that's pretty much as we know today you know, we're getting all these touch screens, small uh, smartphones and all that everywhere <laughs> And, and of course they even got laptops that just seems to change as we know it so hard to believe things have changed since then looking back about 20 years later <sighs> wow and of course um, I forgot to mention that because of its 20th anniversary there was a video blog called everything is terrible you can find that on YouTube and there was a place at Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood where they decided to sell or just take out 14,000 copies of Jerry Maguire on VHS. And there was tons of copies that was borrowed from many places, as you could tell, and they have it all stacked up. And, and then they decided to use all the Jerry Maguire tapes by actually making them into a... <laughs> an actual uh, mascot you know going around uh, <laughs> with all the Jerry Maguire's tapes all stack up of them they even stack all the Jerry Maguire tapes as a pyramid and all of this and then they even sell um, a VHS tape copy of, of the widescreen version of it and and has all the material from the movie they even got the the boombox from the film uh, say anything to be part of with the soundtrack that's in a cassette and it, so they had everything related to the movie even had the movie poster as well but unfortunately you can't buy and rent uh, Jerry Maguire on VHS <laughs> there you go um, yeah they had that for a while it was back in January um, but it was interesting I, I just saw the video that Brendan Mitchell my friend aka wet movie one had posted it which I thought that was cool uh, I, I had to look at it just to see what was it like and I wish I had been there though to see what was it like it just seems rather amazing but at the same time it, did, it kind of feels pretty sad because they I know because they had to it seems like a hipster type of thing having to take a popular film like Jerry Maguire to actually have 14,000 copies of the film on VHS and use it like it's like it's art so there you go they even sold in the <laughs> a membership card that, that has the name Jerry Maguire in, in a blockbuster style and yeah, it looked like it was blockbuster all the way <laughs> so it was cool uh, anyway that, that that's what I wanted to mention but but anyway, Jerry Maguire, great film, definitely worth it. Um, check it out. So I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.